everyone, welcome back to Coach's Corner. I'm Jenna Sanders, sitting down here with Head Coach Williamson for softball. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Jenna. How are you? I'm doing just great. Good. So, going into playoffs. Yes, we are. What's the game plan? Um, game plan is to, to win as many as possible. Um, you know, we, we open up with Griffin for the region tournament, which um, we feel pretty confident about. Uh, so then it's, uh, as long as things go the way we uh, think they will go, then we'll, we'll face the winner of Whitewater McIntosh next week for the region championship. So, um, you know, we've got to come out and play well and take care of Griffin and then um, get our minds right for Whitewater McIntosh, depending on who wins that. So, you're going in number one seed, undefeated, into the region playoffs. How are we going to keep that up? You know, we've got to continue to do the things we've done. Um, we've gotten good pitching all year. We've played very well defensively. And then, um, you know, we've got a lot of stolen bases this year. We've got a lot of speed and we get on base and, and we've got some, some players that uh, wreak havoc on the other team. Um, so, you know, we've got to continue to get, to get on base and then put pressure on the other team, which is what we hope we can continue to do. So we have a lot of fast runners this year. We do. So who would you put as your number one base fielder? Um, right now, um, Lauren Flanders has, uh, I think, 37, 36, 37 stolen bases, which is, which is a school record. Uh, you know, uh, I think the most ever was 32 or 33 back around 2002. Um, so uh, she's, she's set a record. And, and then Leah Dubin is, I think Leah is around 28, 29. So, you know, uh, they're both, uh, they're both way up there. So Lauren is on the younger side <laughs> yes, this year. Yes. So what are you going to keep pushing her to do to continue to play for us? These you know, years? she um, she's got her mind right. You know, she's already committed to play at BYU. Um, assuming all that stays, and there's not a whole lot that I think I need to do. She, you know, she works hard all year round. You know, she plays high level travel ball. So we just need her to continue to have that drive and that desire to play. And, um, you know, I, she'll continue to do, be, be very successful. So what is our number one defensive thing that we need to work on? Um, you know, just making the routine plays. It's, you know, the, the, the ESPN plays are great. Everybody loves seeing them, you know, and everybody's like, ooh and ah. But, you know, we just need to make the routine plays. When they bunt, we need to take the out. We don't need to try to get too fancy different things like that, you know. Do your job, and then uh, everything should work out. Who would you say is our number one best batter going into the playoffs? Yeah, highest average best batter right mm -hmm. now is, is Jolie Lester. She's, uh, she's, it's unbelievable her numbers right now. She's batting close to 600 on the year, which we've never had anyone hit that high. Um, you know, and this, these are for real hits, this is not, you know, errors that we put down as a hit and that sort of stuff, which it seems like sometimes I question other schools when I see their averages when they're batting that high. Um, so, but but this year, you know, she's right up around 600. Um, and then Leah Dubin's 550 range. So, you know, they're both continuing to hit the ball well. What's the best thing that you've seen happen all season? Oh, best thing that I've seen, you know, I have to say, probably the best thing has been the the emergence of uh, Lily, our freshman pitcher. I mean, you know, she's she's done a great job for us, uh, pitching and at the plate. She hits the ball well, but just just to step in as a freshman, she's ten and zero right now with a uh, 1.5-ish ERA, and um, you know that's that's pretty impressive to come in your freshman year. And she's it's, she's pitching big games, you know. We we let her we let her pitch uh, a game the other day that was not a big game, just to give her some innings, and she dominated that team. But it's not like she's thrown five or six games against teams that aren't that strong. She's pitching against the best teams we play, and um, she's like I said, ten and zero. That's uh, that's impressive. So she's been an insanely consistent pitcher all season. What are you doing to make sure that stays up? <laughs> Once again, I wish I could take credit for this, but you know, they go. She goes to um, to a, a private instructor for pitching lessons. Um, you know, so we just kind of 
try to try to limit it. You know, we we gave her a little time off of a week or so back. Um, we thought we needed to, but uh, I didn't know if she was getting tired. Uh, and uh, but then she came in when she came in the Whitewater game. We were going to try to rest her then. You know, she proved that she's fine. She didn't really she doesn't she doesn't need to rest. She's she's good to go. So, um, but uh, you know. She, she goes to her instructor, she works hard at practice, and um, she's, she's been very consistent all year. What's like the main thing that you've been preaching all year at practice? Um, you know, we have uh, a couple of different things, but you know, we, we do our little check-in every day where we, um, it's just a check-in, we don't do it every day. We, we should do it every day, but it's just a good reminder. It's all, it's, it's all over the locker room for them, um, but you know, the focus, Forget about outside distractions. Focus on practice. What you know, what, no matter what you've got going on outside with school, with boyfriend, with whatever, you know, it's time to put that aside and, and focus on, you know, practice today or the game today. Whatever is going on, you know, next at bat. If you had a bad at bat first time, you got to check in and mentally be focused and get ready for that next pitch. In the field, if you made an error, you know, you got to. We got to flush that mistake and move on to the next the next play. So we talk about things like that, you know, a pretty good a pretty good bit. So what's one thing you want the fans of this football team to know? Um, you know, uh, obviously we need your support. We love the girls a lot. They talk about playing at home, how much they love playing at home. Uh, they love it when we have big crowds. So we need all the fans to come out when you can. I know everybody can't make every game, but. When you can come out, especially you know now that it's playoff time, uh, the atmosphere, it's just fun to play a fall sport when the weather, when you start throwing fall in there. And I think the next week or so that's gonna happen. It's gonna cool off a little bit. So, you know, everybody out there that can come to the games, come out, we play today, doubleheader five and seven. Um, next week, I believe it's, I think Tuesday. Tuesday's a doubleheader maybe. Um, which will be the winner of Whitewater McIntosh, assuming we take care of Griffin today. Um, but yeah, definitely if you can come out, we've got home field advantage. If we can win, if we can win this region tournament, we can have home field advantage. You know, for a few weeks here and going into the state tournament, if we can continue to advance, we can host two rounds at home. So you know, that would be nice to be able to play on our home field. All right, well, thank you so much for your time, Coach. Thank you guys for watching, and make sure you come out and support your Lady Panthers.